Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 7, Thoughts. This episode is called Deals with Our Devils. Another episode I love, like most things MCU, certainly almost everything MCU TV, really. Season 1 of Iron Fist is the only that doesn't fit that so far. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. Let's dive right in. So, I quite like the device that this episode uses of, I think they do it maybe three times, where they cut, you know, for, first we see the scene, like, what, you know, what is perceivable by, you know, regular people, then we see the same scene, but from the perspective of the, you know, what is the right word. Uh, let's go with the pulsed individuals. And yeah, I, I thought it worked quite well. And yeah, let's dive right in. So yeah, Eli attacks using his power and we see the, the yeah, the video is shown of the pulse hitting and, and the people seemingly disappearing. And it is, yeah, you know, from a certain point of view, it does look like they're just, you know, uh, um, yeah, being being removed from existence. When really, you know, it's they're being removed. F they're they're transported to another dimension. I think is how they put it. And I quite like Daisy throughout the episode is convinced that they're not really gone. You know, and and she has the line, "I know what it feels like when someone." Um, someone dies or something like that, and this isn't that. And, yeah, they point out Eli was the one who hired the, the gang to steal the box. Very clever. Makes perfect sense. You know, he could do that from behind bars. He just needs to talk to the right people. You know, there's there, there are instances in real life of someone continuing to arrange crime from inside a cell. If there's enough people on the outside that are still faithful to them. And... Let's see... Yeah, so... We finally get the answer to what happened to, to Gemma. And, yeah, she is put in front of the guy who's in Terrogenesis, and I'm almost certain this is... I'm going to go ahead and just say I'm thinking it's Ellen Nadir's husband. I know you're not okay, but are you okay? Because it's it's one of the, you know, very, very nice little bit of dialogue because it is that thing of like, I mean, okay, so obviously you're not actually okay, but I do want to, to you know, I want to express that I'm I'm here for you kind of thing. And <laughs> first we sharpen the axe, then we cut the tree. My axe is plenty sharp. And a shotgun. <laughs> and yeah, Gabe and Daisy talk about Robbie. And I, I like the little bit of, you know, you know how stubborn he is. Oh, you don't know the half of it. <laughs> You've worked with him for a little bit, you know. Imagine growing up with him. And, yeah. I appreciate that it didn't take forever for the episode to to give us the answer. Because, yeah, the moment that Mac, you know, he gets on a motorcycle, he throttles a guy, and then drives all, you know. Yeah, he's, he's the new Ghost Rider, obviously. So, yeah, really appreciate that they don't take forever to get to that reveal. And, yeah, we see Coulson and Fitz realize that the others can't see them. <laughs> I hate watching my own demise. Yeah, this is very, like, you know, they, they are secretly among the people who are grieving the their apparent deaths, even though they're not actually dead. I guess this scene was co-written by Mark Twain. And, let's see. <laughs> dude, what? 
and yeah, we learned that Mace lost Gemma. Did you not? Do, do we have tracker on her? We didn't know we'd need one. And yeah, I like these little bits where it's like, did they hear? You know, did May hear Colson and did did Ada hear Fitz? Kind of thing. Finally, someone who listens. I, I was going to say, like, Phil, come on. Obviously, Mac is going to say, no. It's, you know, Ixnay on the Darkhold, A. Eh? And... Let's see. Then we have the... Yeah, we see the, the spirit of vengeance pass to, to Mac. And I, I like the line, you know, if I'm being dragged to hell... At least let me, this is the last chance I get to, to take Eli with me. And, yeah, very cool when when Daisy is chasing down Mac. You mean they left just as we were taking off without a helmet? <laughs> yeah, that's, I 100% believe that Mace is one of those guys, like, you can't leave without wearing a helmet. And I'm sorry, manual. And poor Nathanson, he just wants to help. Um, what's your name, Nathanson? Nathanson, get lost. <laughs> and yeah, you know, um, Radcliffe says this is too much for a human mind. And again, I appreciate that they got to the point not very long after because the moment that he said that, I was like, so Ada. And, you know, again, it's not necessarily a good thing, but it's at least a solution, and they can deal with the aftermath of that later. Hi! <laughs> How much do we love Gemma? It's a lot. It's like, it's it's breaking the meter. She is so adorable. She's, like, and I mean, ultimately, evidently, he did hear her, so it wasn't completely ridiculous to do, but just, yeah. Very cool when Mac takes on the, the gang members. And, yeah. May and later Coulson are told that Ada is actually a an android. And another thing, I'm, I'm glad that they also answered this. Because the moment that, you know, I, yeah, once once it became clear, okay, Ada's gonna try to read the, the Darkhold, I was like... Is it binary? Because, you know, it's, they said it's the first language you learn, and, yeah. And it it is indeed. I really feel for the, the person who had to... I mean, I guess, well, let's see. Because I was thinking, you know, someone had to actually put all those ones and zeros. But I guess very likely it was just, like... Maybe copy paste, or maybe is is there a computer program where you can just press a button and it'll generate a bunch of? I guess maybe they typed out actual words and then ran them through a translator that made them binary, and then printed that page. I really hope so. I really hope there wasn't some poor prop department intern that had to stand there and run zero zero one. Just, that would have been just. And there were several pages worth, too. And, yeah, we see that Robbie was in the car with Daisy. And I like, don't mess up the car. The healing only works when I'm behind the wheel. <laughs> it's very, like, you know, there's a lot of guys who don't want, you know, others to drive their cars, including... You know, women. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just realized. I guess it's kind of a misogynistic, you know, oh, women can't drive kind of joke. Yeah, that's unfortunate. You know, I. Um, Jimmy Carr has this great bit where he says, you know, 93% of all car accidents in Britain are caused by men. And you know what that means? The last 7% are caused by. Bloody women drivers! You're a you're a menace, and you know it. You know, it it was always a a an un, untrue thing. It was just it was a bunch of men who couldn't handle that a woman was going to do something that they 
did and then made them feel manly because nothing is more frail in the entire multiverse than the male ego and let's see the Yeah, uh, um, Coulson learns that Ada's a GD robot. And, yeah, I like the, the argument between Coulson and, and Fitz. And, you know, because, yeah, Fitz feels like Coulson threw in the towel, and that's not how Coulson sees it. Great character moment, and this is the kind of situation where that would come out, because, you know, for a while, Fitz has been able to contain himself but yeah you know now it's like it's looking like they might not be able to to fix this and let's see yeah and Simmons managed to to remove some of the the pterogenesis uh, cocoon but then she's also taken back out and they do just bring her back to mace so i guess that's just how like they're they're not familiar with any other way of of like that's that's their he hello and goodbye you know bag over the head and drag the person away and let's see which gets really awkward at, at family gatherings because like everyone is constantly carrying around a bag you know Hello, and then we have the uh, um, yeah, yeah, the thing. I built a robot that's constructing an interdimensional portal. I may die happy. You may die quickly. And yeah, we have the cliche: of, you know, fight it, fight it. You've never given up on anything in your life. And all yours. And yeah, very, very cute when Fitzsimmons are reunited. And also, like, Fitz goes right up to the boss, who he knows has super strength and is the boss of him, you know, and like, you better bring back, you know. Let's see, it, it was like, it was potentially gonna devolve into a take the effing elephant scene and yeah Robbie also manages to to get back and you know tells Matt and and Maggie's like I, I thought you might be coming through here want to settle want to help me settle one last score and just yeah very cool and <laughs> in the post credit scene Radcliffe is like celebrating how talented Ada is and Ada and I'm guessing not at you know Radcliffe's order it seems like it's her own thing is making I mean it looks like a brain I, I, like a synthetic brain I guess so yeah that's Huh, because, you know, yeah, I mean, he already told her sometimes it's okay to lie in, under the right circumstances if you have the right goal. Now she seems to be lying to him because the Darkhold put thoughts in her head. And... Let's see, so the... Yeah, according to IMDb trivia for this episode, this the episode was nominated for Best Dialogue slash ADR in Television Short Form at the 64th Golden Reel Awards. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely very well done. And let's see. Yeah, this episode marks the second time that Mac has been controlled by a power bestowing force. The first one being Ye Who Enter Here. This episode tells the audience Robbie's car only repairs itself when he is the driver. And... Let's see... I think that might be... Yeah, so the... The, yeah, some of the best lines from the episode are in the memorable quotes section for the 
episode and I think that might be about it for the yeah the um yeah I I quite like the the yeah I'm building an interdimensional gateway with an android I've created. If this works, I could die happy. We've put our faith in a robot who says she hears ghosts. If it fails, you might die quickly. 